I started off my project for 6.3 as a project revolving around nature. However, in January, I got a number of paid commission, creating more covers for musician Rowan Young and creating a logo for a lodge in the lakes rented out through Airbnb. I had already formed the idea of making a small publication about lynching, a project around photography and nature. I wanted in my last semester to incorporate photography in my practice as I always loved photography. So I started out with reading some books on landscape photography and walking. I will start with looking at two landscape photographers and show particularly the work of Bertinsky who has inspired me to take photographs of lichen. Edward Bertinsky photographs landscape from an aerial point and his concept is Enthropokine. His photographs reminded me of lichen. At first glance, you don't realize what you are looking at. The project is looking at the idea of the Anthropocene. This is a word that's been coined about 12 years ago. And in short, what it's saying is that in the last 12,000 years, we've been in uh, something called the Holocene, which is a geological epoch. And geologists and stratigraphers are saying that we've crossed a boundary. We're now changing the planet from one state to another. And we are now entering the Anthropocene, which is man change. So we are the event. Another artist I've been looking at is Sebastian Salgado. Salgado has been documenting the results of the war in Kuwait from 1991 and the devastating effects on the environment. One of his other main projects was gold documenting the inhumane conditions of the workers at a gold mine deep in the Amazonian jungle, a view on how we misuse the Earth's resources. I took these images of lichen whilst walking through the Lake District, taking pleasure into photographing a series into these colourful eco-worlds. When researching deeper into lichen, it turns out they have a lot of attributes, so whilst Bersinski photographs the big picture, we can also learn a lot by, from just exploring these lichen that are all around us. I made my final publication set at an A5 size per page, A4 per spread. I made this decision due to parts of the images being much sharper than the other due to using a macro lens. Therefore, I decided having them small and concise allows us to see, see the images at their best quality while also seeing them larger than we usually would in real life. The narrative of the book, however, worked perfectly throughout. The idea was to give the viewer a brief idea that these images were of lichen, and then towards the end, I give them a more concise information on what lichen really are, and some weird and wonderful facts about them. This allows the viewer to really keep pondering and wondering the way through the booklet, and then they finally find out what that is they're looking at. I then decided to put the names of lichen on vellum paper to add additional texture to the publication without breaking it up as much as if using a full colour stock would have done. I was asked by an owner of a lodge situated in the Lake District between Lake Coniston and Lake Windermere to carry out a branding for it. They wanted it done as they rent it out through Airbnb and they just wanted to add some branded items while guests stay at the lodge for them to have a postcard to send to family or friends or as a little memento to take away. So the brief that they set was quite open and some of the items that they said that could be included were stationery, pencils or pens, postcards, business cards, some small stickers possibly and maybe even a canvas bag. I then carried out a questionnaire with the owner of the lodge to find out a bit more about it. I found out that the furnishings were very modernistic and that it was a very open plan and spacious place. I also found out that it was very secluded in a tranquil forest. After doing this, I looked at some of the reviews left on the Airbnb website to see whether I could carry anything from the reviews into the design as well. Inspired by the modernistic furniture in the lodge, I started to explore logos related to modernism. I got a book called Mo Logo Modernism, which is where my research started. Jens Muller, one of the authors of the book, states that logos that are modernistic work well in both black and white, which is something that newer logos don't always often do. He also said that they are simple enough that anyone could draw them by hand. 
and that they are based on the basic geometric forms. Therefore, I dive deeper into this idea of what a modernistic logo is, as this is what I wanted to design. The seven traits of a modernistic logo are sans serif typeface, active negative or white space, familiar symbols, geometric shapes and lines, balanced composition, primary tones, and minimalist, minimalistic features. I didn't only look at modernist designers, but also at what contemporary designers are doing in regards to boutique hotel branding, which gave me some further ideas on how to implement the branding and better ideas on how to carry, carry out the branding on a whole. In conclusion, when looking at the lodge's final design, I think that the seven traits of modernistic logo have been carried out into this design really well. The white lines going through the building really brings out the context for where the place is in the hills and what is surrounded by, such as streams and other water body masses. I think that the tree by the lodge's side really indicates the connection between the lodge itself and nature as it is completely within it in real life. As the lodge gains guests from all over the world, I found it also important to allow the logo to be understood universally, which I definitely think works. Overall, the final design and the final implementations of the design onto a bag, paper pad, stickers, soap wraps and postcards worked really well as a collective and the owner was overall very happy with the outcome. At the end of last year, I was asked by musician Rowan Young to produce an album cover for his first song to be released on all major streaming platforms, such as iTunes and Spotify. I have since designed five album covers and one poster for his gig alongside his logo. I also gained an insight into the world of record covers. Artwork is as much a part of the identity of the record as the spiralling grooves that make a vinyl sing. So it's hard to believe that once upon a time, the world was full of grey sleeved records. In the late 30s, Alex Steenwas challenged the status quo with then the gutsy move of designing art covers instead of cheap generic paper sleeves. Over three decades, Steinwes created thousands of record sleeves, prototyping the modern album cover as we know it. Without his pioneering work, the music industry may never have evolved in the same way. The best of his images, however, were not decorative, but rather commented on the music. For the songs of Three Men by Paul Robson, he composed a graphic monument to the horrors of slavery, a chained hand holding a knife that resonated as a symbol of heroism. Similarly, the mammoth black and the white hands hitting piano keys on Boogie Woogie was a statement of protest in an area when racial segregation, even in the music industry, was tolerated. I then stumbled across Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album cover, one of the most iconic that there is. Researching further, I found out that it was designed by Hypnosis, a design group. Their relation with Pink Floyd started when they were art students and started designing record covers for their records. This relation between the artist and designer is something I really like the sound of, as it's a journey for both Rowan starting his music career and me starting my design career. And we can both learn from each other through the process. After delving deeper into the work of hypnosis, I like how the majority of the covers use mainly photography, typically a real, realistic medium, but they had elaborately manipulated it in some way, either by darkroom tricks, airbrushing, retouching, manual cutting and pasting. Here are the final covers I produced alongside Rowan Young. Throughout the design process, we use different techniques such as photography, printing, digital editing, cutting and pasting, and layering. In conclusion, I think that they related well to what we wanted, which was different outcomes for all of his tunes. This especially worked well throughout using these different mediums, and I think this was the most important part of the process.